Happy Tuesday, Tabernacle Youth family and friends. Uh, I pray that today is a blessed Tuesday and that is, you enjoy um, and are enjoying this uh, sunny weather that we're having here in the Pacific Northwest. Today is Tuesday, July 5th, and hopefully you all also had a blessed uh, celebration yesterday. We're celebrating the 4th of July, and so here we are, Tuesday, July 5th. It's a new month. It just feels like I was just saying that like a couple of days ago when we was kicking off June. And so here we are now in uh, July, July 5th, kicking it off. It's half of the year is gone <laughs> already. And so um, it's just amazing. One thing that I will say, is just thank God for his un unsearchable riches and, and mercies to get us here to this day and this time. And so um, hopefully that you all are blessed, youth. Hopefully you're enjoying your summer. Um, it's, uh, again, it's some beautiful weather that we're having. So hopefully all things are going well. So let's go in and let's hop in for today's Bible study. And then we will we will continue. Please be on the lookout for other PSA and announcements about some activities that we'll be doing together as a youth ministry here at the Tabernacle Mission Baptist Church just to get our youth engaged and involved and and in co community with uh, one, one another and each other. And so we're so excited about the plans that we have upcoming for the Tabernacle Youth Ministry. So please be on the lookout for, for all those um, PSAs and announcements that will be coming out shortly. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day, chance, opportunity. God, I love you and I praise you. And there's no one like you in all the earth. And so, God, we ask that you please calm our hearts and our minds and bring us in as we get ready to come and, and study of your word for tonight. And Lord, how we thank you, honor you, and praise you because you're just great and mighty and kind. There's no one like you in all the earth, oh God. And so for this and so many other reasons, we give your name the praise, glory, and honor. And we ask that you open up our hearts and our minds as we prepare to delve into the day's Bible study. We love you and we honor you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right. So the last time we were together, we were doing uh, we're, we're still in First Timothy, chapter four, verse 12. And remember, uh, I'm going to read that our scripture focus, which is the, the theme scripture verse for our mission statement for the Tabernacle Youth Ministry. Again, our mission statement is to help youth know Christ, grow in Christ and experience Christ. And that's coming from First Timothy, chapter four, verse 12, the New International Version of the Bible. And it reads, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith and in purity. So we've already broken down this verse and have talked about thoroughly. Um, don't let anybody look down because you are young. We talked about that. And, and for those who are just joining us as a, as a context for this scripture, this is Paul writing to young Timothy, who is this young pastor of this congregation. And he tells young Timothy, I know that you're young. And, and he's about 30 years old, around around the age that I am. I'm 31. So young Timothy's about 30 years old. But there are some older members in this congregation. Um, and so he's saying, don't let them look down on you just because of your age and, and your youth. Um, and don't let that be an excuse for you to make any mistakes either. Um, but he says, set an example. And then Paul gives a specific list on how Tim or how uh, young Timothy to set an example for these believers in this church that he's now pastoring. And so he says, set an example for the believers in speech. So we talked about how we need to watch what we say. And he says, set an example for the believers in conduct. And so we talked about how our speech and what we do um, can reflect who we are. We talked about in love and what it means to show and be an example of God's love. Now, the last time we were together, we were spending some time um, introducing faith. And we said that Paul is instructing young Timothy. Timothy, set an example for these believers in faith. So show them what it means to have faith in God. Show them what it means to trust and believe God. So that's the first thing. But then Timothy showed them what it means to be faithful to God. 
<laughs> so remember, I, I, I started this, this I, I did this introduction where we talked about what does it mean to trust that at the, the first thing that Paul wants Timothy to do, show them what it means to have faith in God and to trust God. We are, you and I, continually have situations, circumstances that may come up in our life. And, and especially when you're around your friends and other ones that can challenge, um, that pre presents an opportunity for you to share with someone else your faith in Christ. We are on the daily basis presented with opportunities where we can and we should be able and ready to tell people who we believe in and why we believe in them. And so we, we began our discussion and talking about faith and that faith is not something that we come up with on our own. And that Ephesians, and we discussed last time that Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9, makes it clear that faith is a gift from God, not because we deserve it, not because we have earned it, or not because we are worthy of it, um, but it's given to God with his grace and his mercy. So, Faith is also what God uses to distinguish those who are his followers and those who don't follow him. So Timothy, so Paul, so Paul tells Timothy and tells you and I today that number one, we need to set an example for believers and non-believers too, because you are all daily interacting and engaging with people who have faith, who, who have different faith and belief systems. And as I hope I've been trying to make this case, as, as I've been breaking this verse down, hopefully by the example that you set in your speech, in your conduct, and how you show love to other people, both Christians and non-Christians, both people who ride with you and people who don't ride with you, people who are down for you, people who, are don't, who aren't down for you. How you show all those things, people are going to want to be interested to know why and how you act like that. And then it opens an opportunity for you to share your faith with Christ, to share your faith in Christ with someone else. And so there's no greater pleasure of having the opportunity to say, well, I'm glad that I have this opportunity to share with you about a man named Jesus and how his father, the creator of the universe, God Almighty, was concerned about you and I that he sent his only son as a sacrifice, as a, as a substitute sacrifice for you and I, because if we're honest, we, can, we don't do right. Even when we get saved, we still don't do right. But yet God's, but yet Christ's sacrifice to God on our behalf has made us, has and we're going to talk about this soon once we get into our discussion of the book of Romans, has justified us. We are now justified. We now have right standing with God. God has said that our sins are forgiven. And so, and once you are forgiven of your sins, that you have this new life in Christ. And that it doesn't mean that you're not going to mess up sometimes. And that it doesn't mean that life will be um, roses and, and everything. But that when you're going through the hardest trials in your life, you have someone that you can go to to help you through those trials. And the best part is that because, because he came down, Jesus Christ came down and experienced all the trials and tribulations and the temptations that we face, 
he's able to identify with us and to intercede, go to God on our behalf for us when we fall, when we mess up, when we need help. So this is what faith does. And so, so by setting an example in all these other areas, it provides us an, it provides us an opportunity to share our faith with someone else and to ex and, and to um, let someone else have the opportunity to get to know Christ. So okay, so that's the first the first thing is that when we set an example, Paul is what it means to have faith in God. Um, and then in addition to that, what it means to be faithful to God. So let's look at Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. And this is probably one of the most famous scriptures on faith that we have in the Bible. It's well quoted. And if you ask your parents or grandparents, aunt, uncles, guardians, whoever, that if, they, if you ask them about Hebrews 11 and 1, they'll, 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 they'll sometimes can just say it off the top of their head, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2 says, for by it, and for by it, he's talking about by faith, for by faith. So let me back up five seconds. So remember, we don't know who wrote the book of Hebrews. There are some biblical scholars and commentators, folks who much more smarter than I am, who make an argument that this, the Hebrew church that Paul is writing to, no, not Paul, the Hebrew church that this author is writing to, based on some stylistic guidelines and based off of previous letters that we have from Paul, that some biblical scholars and commentators suggest that the author is Paul, that Paul writes this letter to the church, to the Hebrew church. But we know that the only person who actually knows who actually wrote this book is God. And remember, we talked about this in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, that ultimately we know the whole entire author of the, author of the Bible is God. Because remember that all scripture is God breathe. Remember, we talked about that um, a couple of months ago and last year. <laughs> Excuse me. So, so the writer of Hebrews is writing to this Hebrew church who, remember, these are Jewish Christians. So these are folks who grew up as Jews. They know the Jewish customs. They were brought up in Jewish traditions. But they came into saving faith in Jesus Christ. So they grew up as Jews. One way or the other, they were introduced to Christ and his teachings and they became believers. So they're called Jewish Christians for that reason. And they're, and they're called that to differentiate them from Gentile, Gentile Christians. Gentile Christians are those who did not grow up as Jews, but who came into saving faith of Jesus Christ. So you'll um, see that Paul says that he is the apostle to the Gentiles. And we see in, in the book of Acts, there's this argument that takes place between Paul and, and Peter, because Peter tries to, Peter, um, when he's around certain folks, tries to make this argument and stand for this argument that Christ is only for those who are Jewish Christians. And then Paul says, no, Christ is for all. And this is, and this is where we get some of those arguments about there's no Jew, no Greek, uh, and no slave, no free. All of us are equal. And all of us have the opportunity to come to saving faith of Jesus Christ. And that is what Christ came to do, is that he did not only come for the lost sheep and those, those, uh, the, Jewish, the Jews of that time, but that he came for us all. And we have some other parables that Jesus talks about. Um, and there's some other things that are mentioned in scriptures that give evidence for that. 
So, Hebrews chapter 11. So, these Jewish Christians are struggling. They are facing some hard trials. They're facing some persecution. And so, the writer of Hebrews writes this book. And we get to chapter 11 begins with this verse verse the verse the first three verses which I just read Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 through 3 again this first verse was so well known now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen for it was by faith that the elders attained a good report and through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that through so that things that which are seen were not made of things which do appear. We're going to break this down. So let's talk about this again. Remember, so there these are these Jewish Christians who are struggling being in their faith and being faithful to God because of their persecution. So the Hebrew writer says, all right, so let's talk about what faith is. So faith is now faith. Is, let's, let's break this down verse by verse. Verse one. Now faith is the substance. So our physical eyesight, the sight, our eyes gives us the sense of things in the material world. This is a piece of paper. And I know that this is a piece of paper because my eyes are looking at it. I'm looking at this piece of paper and I know that this is paper because my eyes are seeing this and I'm saying that this is paper. I'm recording on my cell phone. This is a microphone and this is a watch. I know this is a watch because I can see it with my eyes. So this Hebrew writer, the author of Hebrews says the same thing about your eyesight can see the material world and 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 make um, sense of the material world. That's what faith is for the spiritual world. Faith gives us evidence when everything else says not to believe. When everything else goes against what our eyes see, faith goes against that. And faith says it's not so. Faith encourages us, strengthens us, and develops us when we're going through hard trials. Faith is what pushes us to believe that no matter what, we may be experiencing or seeing right now that faith gives us the opportunity. Faith persuades us and faith pushes us and reminds us to believe that we have a God in heaven who is fighting for you and me. So let's stop right there. We, me and you. So that's what faith teaches us and tells us. All right, I know it. You, you've all uh, just finished your, the academic year. You all know what tests are. And faith uh, is, again, what gives us the opportunity and what reminds us that I know that this is what the test says. But you know something different. And I know your money is funny, but this, I know that your health or the health of a loved one is in question. There is, is, is struggling right now. Doctors give a bad report. Doctors say this. Um, you may have some other things going on. But faith reminds you and says that, but I have a God and I know a God who's a healer. I know you said that this is unhealable, uncurable, but I know a God, and this is going to be perfect going into the, the second verse. I know a God who can heal and has healed. Um, so 
verse the second part next part of verse one says faith is a substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen faith is needed for what we can't see and what we can't touch whenever we reach a pinnacle part of our life that is hard for us to navigate through. Faith reminds us that God says in his word that he will never leave us nor forsake us. God reminds us in his word that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. God reminds us in his word that all things work together for the good of them who are called to his purpose. That, that that's what that's what faith sounds like. I don't see the way made right now, but I know that God is going to make a way. I don't see um, this issue being solved right now, but my faith tells me that God has the power to make a way out of no way. And then again, this last part, it is the faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. It is a faith is at the core of it, a willingness to trust in God, to rely on God and to cling to God. That's what faith is. If faith is anything, faith is our reliance to trust in God, to rely on God. To cling to God. So, all right. So, now let's go back to the first part of verse one where it says, it's the substance of things hoped for. And I was talking about, I know what my eyes see, but my faith tells me something different. So, what was going to help encourage these Hebrew believers and help encourage you and I was in verse two. For by it, for by faith, these elders obtained a good testimony. New International Version says obtained a good report. So these Jewish Christians were, again, remember, they were struggling in their faith. They were doing like, it's just hard times. And so um, if you continue to read Hebrews chapter 11, after these verse, first three verses and continue on, you'll get what's called the hall of faith. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Sarah. By faith, Enoch. By faith, all, and it goes down this list of all these people who accomplish great things by faith. And then the Hebrew writer begins Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 with this. So seeing that we have such great a cloud of witness, let us press on. What's this greater cloud of witness that he talks in 12 verse 1? All these people that he's about to list in chapter 11. So your homework is read all of Hebrews chapter 11. Because it is in Hebrews chapter 11 that we get this list of elders that this writer is talking about in Hebrews chapter, in verse 2 of Hebrews chapter 11, that also had different circumstances, had different personalities, had different trials and situations, but they all had one thing in common, faith. Their faith in God did not, it was tested, it was tried, and they held on to their faith. They were in some very circumstance, they were in some very particular circumstances that looked dismal, looked bad, but they held on to their faith. And in Hebrews chapter 6, we learn this in Hebrews chapter 6, because Hebrews chapter 6 says, it is impossible to please God um, without faith. And remember that the Lord is, a, is one who is diligent. And uh, a key part of Hebrew chapter 11, verse 6 tells he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So if you're struggling in faith, seek him 
and he'll reward you with some opportunities to strengthen your faith and to strengthen your belief. And so that's what he's getting to these. And so he said, you have these examples in these elders, these folks who have through the time of life that we have an example of in the Bible, you and I today, who have endured a lot, but were able to accomplish a lot because of their faith. And he says that um, they obtained this good report, that they have this report that you and I can use when we're struggling and facing hard times in faith. All right, let's stop right there. Um, because there's so much more I want to say about this and we're not there yet. We're not done yet. Close to being done yet. So um, let's just do a quick recap. So understood that, that um, Paul tells Timothy that Timothy, I need you to set an example for these believers in faith and that it not only means to trust in God, but to be faithful to God. And in this introduction of Hebrews chapter 11, in these first three verses, remember that these Hebrew Christians are struggling right now in their faith because of various different things. And because of that, he's saying faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So your faith may not look like it. It is a situation that you may be facing with, that you may be looking at, may not line up to what your eyes are seeing. But this is when you need to use your spiritual eyesight and your spiritual senses and believe and trust God and say, God, I know what I'm seeing. I know what I'm hearing, but I'm believing you for a different report. And the reason we can believe God for a different report from a different because of what we're instead of what we're seeing is because we have these elders. We have other people, not only in the Bible, but Paul was talking to I keep saying Paul, but the Hebrew writer was talking to these 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 Jewish Christians and letting them know, hey, there's some other people that endure some hard trials, too. You're not this is not the first time that people who were believers endured hard trials and they may have had different circumstances, different situations. But one thing they had in common was faith. And that is why it's important for us to have faith. So let's stop there. We're going to come back next week, finish this discussion on faith and move on to the last part of verse of first Timothy chapter four, verse 12, set an example for the believers in purity. But we're going to have one more session talking about setting an example for the believers in faith. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to share with our youth on today and to discuss, have a discussion about faith and what it means to be faithful to you and what it means to be have faith in you. God, we ask that you strengthen our faith today and that God, that you give us opportunity to share our faith with other people. We love you, we honor you, and we praise you. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. All right, Tab, you family, friends, I hope you have a blessed day. Join us at 7 o'clock tonight. Pastor Manaway is leading us in our Bible study, Zechariah chapter 8. Um, and so hopefully you are able to join in with us as we begin that next, that next chapter with Pastor Manaway. And so have a blessed night. I'll see you here next week where we'll talk more about faith. <laughs>